I'll be buying it forever. You can't increase the supply of Bitcoin. So if you look at the world currencies, they're inflating at 10, 10% or more a year for the past 30 years, maybe as much as 14% a year. You can expect they'll keep inflating for the next 30 years. And so Bitcoin measured in currencies of the world and in currency derivatives is just going to keep going up with volatility. All be uh, Gold is not fixed, Deirdre, right? Gold is increasing in supply at 2% a year in the physical regime. And uh, bankers can rehypothecate gold and they can print 100 ounces of paper gold for every real ounce of gold. And so Bitcoin is the dominant digital monetary network. And because it's dominant and because it's fixed, it means that it's the it's the most reliable, highest integrity, scarcest thing in the financial universe. Bitcoin is going up forever, Deirdre. I think that there's two ways to see the world. There's the crypto world. The crypto world would like to issue their own securities and create their own banks and create their own stock exchanges and not be subject to the CFTC, the SEC or the Treasury uh, Department. And uh, they would just like to recreate the world anew. There's the Bitcoin view of the world, which is we've got digital property. All we need to do is plug it into every existing insurance company, existing finance company, existing bank, existing country, existing technology. So Bitcoin is a solution for Apple to make a trillion dollars. Whereas in the crypto world, they want to rip Apple to zero and reinvent everything. And look, I, my view is that Bitcoin can be paired with JP Morgan and make JP Morgan a better bank. It can be paired with the U.S. dollar and make the U.S. dollar a better currency. It could be Bitcoin can be paired with the existing power structure and the existing world as we know it today and make everything better. You don't need to rip everything down and rebuild it. So I think that there's a schism here. The crypto world is about rebuilding everything. We don't we don't want regulation. We don't want taxation. We don't want government. And there's another way to see the world, which is let's just fix the capital structure yeah, of Bitcoin and then let the world evolve to something better. I think the administration is quite qualified. And I think when they look at the world, what they see is Bitcoin is property and it should be uh, it should be treated as property. I think they look at stable coins and they think that stable coins should be issued by banks and be treated as money markets in cyberspace and that it should be subject to banking rules. I think they look at security tokens and they think they should be treated as securities. And I think they look at, uh, at the trading and they think if you're going to trade derivatives or securities, they should come under existing commodities and securities laws. And if they do all those things, if that's the way the world looks at this, then the entire the entire ecosystem is going to grow. Stable coins are 130 billion dollars right now, and if uh, if J.P. Morgan and Citigroup start issuing stable coins, we're going to go to a trillion dollars, and then 10 mm -hmm. trillion dollars, and then 100 trillion dollars. So, so I I don't I'm not at all concerned about what's going on. I actually think it's going to accelerate the adoption of Bitcoin as the world's reserve asset. I think okay. it's going to, I think it's also going to provide a foundation for the 21st century economy that's for the good of everybody. I'm not troubled by, uh, by what's happening. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to be a bank and you don't want to get a banking license and you don't want to comply with existing treasury, CFTC and SEC rules, then you might be concerned about them having an interest in you. But on the other hand, we have $500 trillion of stuff in the existing system. And I think it's I think it's more important that the existing banks, the existing companies, the existing countries adopt the digital uh, the digital asset economy than it is that uh, uh, that they stay out of that system. I'm an optimist and I actually believe that Bitcoin can fix everything and that technology makes the world a better place. I'm an optimist. Gary Gensler taught a class at MIT yeah. on blockchain and money. Right. Nobody in the administration understands digital technology better than him. And and we've got two possible views. Right. One view is, wouldn't it be nice if stable coins were used for international remittances by global multinationals? By what if the U.S. dollar was used by eight billion people on the planet in a friction free fashion? Right. And what if the entire world economy of 100 million companies and eight billion people all evolved to something better. But if we're going to evolve is. to something better, then governments need to adopt it and get comfortable with it, like the United States government. 
And the banking sector and the financial sector and publicly traded companies need to be able to handle it. And I think the objective of the administration is to bring this technology into, into a regulatory framework such that the entire world economy can avail themselves of the benefits of money moving at the speed of light. That's mm -hmm. what's going on here. Let me make a point here, which I think is constructive. You have, a, you have uh, the crypto economy, which has been entrepreneurial and has been a bit opaque and, and under-regulated or unregulated for a decade, and it got to a few trillion dollars. And now you have a struggle between the past and the future, and you've got a set of institutional investors that have hundreds of trillions of dollars, and will they come into the space? You have a set of institutional companies like Square and Apple and Google and PayPal and MicroStrategy that have huge amounts of capital and technology and brand, and will they come into the space? And you have countries like the United States, right? Like El Salvador, will they come into the space? And I think that we're going to move from the first uh, decade, which got us to about two to three trillion. If you want to get to 30 trillion, you need to get to the point where like MicroStrategy buys a billion dollars. We, we bought $3.1 billion worth of Bitcoin, okay? You can't find any entrepreneur that ever put $3.1 billion of capital into anything in the entire crypto system. And yet we're a small company. So I think the next stage is about laying the framework such that the Ray Dalios of the world will buy $5 billion of Bitcoin or $10 billion of Bitcoin. Or when Fidelity actually shifts $500 billion, right? They got 11 trillion. When they shift, they have $2 trillion worth of fixed income fund. When 25% of that flows into Bitcoin, you're gonna see a different world. And you're not gonna get there if you have a, a never ending debate about, is that a security? Is that a backed by real money? And, and can, is it regulated? And I think Gensler's point is we need transparency with regard to banks that issue digital money. We need transparency with regard to exchanges that trade securities for the public. We need transparency with regard to organizations that would issue their own securities in the crypto economy. And, uh, and this stuff is it's well understood in the mainstream, uh, the mainstream community, like if you're if you're going to sell stock to the public or debt to the public, you have to file your statements and you have to you have to go through regulatory compliance. What's happening right now is the entire crypto world is going to go through this evolution to become more compliant and more institutionalized. And it either will make it through that and grow by a factor of 10 or it will not make it through that gate and it will it will have its uh, growth uh, impaired. We started by saying that Bitcoin is going up forever. Let me ask. Forever. <laughs> We're just a question of how fast yeah. and how is the okay, rest so of the economy going to revolve around it? We'll do. Let's do this again, let's say a few months from now or let's say a year from now. One about, year from now. How about where do you think at 100K? It's going to be 100K for you. Michael, are you down for that? Sure. When does that happen? When If we just, you know, friendly, friendly bet. Soon. Soon. And there's no price too high that you wouldn't be buying at. Right, Michael? I'll be buying it forever. <laughs>